Good evening, everyone, and welcome. I'm Kiki Sanchez, and I'll be your host for the evening. Um, this is the reading of The Debris of Dreams by Leonardo Gonzalez Dominguez. And I'll be reading stage directions to help you better envision the action of today's play. Tonight's presentation will be about 60 minutes long, and there will be no intermission. There will be a Q&A afterwards, so please feel, feel free to stay around and ask questions. And now please welcome our cast. Chewie is played by Christopher Hernandez, Rosa is played by Maria Alejandra Hernandez, and Antonio is played by Carrie Deneve. The reading is directed by Keith Winston. Please enjoy and thank you. in four hours. The Must Stop Cafe is buzzing with the energy of a packed restaurant. Every table on booth is occupied. Multiple conversations are overheard, but our eyes are on Rosa. Ahorita, caramba. Rosa, ¿dónde está mi Rosa? Shoot I told you, you can't come in here when I'm busy. How was I supposed to know you were busy? You don't, you've done this enough times to know that any time before noon, it's off the table. Which one? Because... They all seem to have something on the table. Come on, Mija, clear them up. Jim is gonna... Chewy, you really want to stress me out right now? Huh? Look, if you leave, I'll promise I'll buy dinner tonight, okay? I won't torture you with my cooking, but only if you stop torturing me. Torturing me? And here I was, thinking that if I rush over to say a quick hello, I can brighten your day. I had choices, you know, and I still choose to come here. Choices? Ha! Mi amor, you're lucky you got me, okay? I have a lot of worries in this world, but losing you isn't one of them. I could have choices if I want to. What was that? Chew. The only person who considered all that is right over there. And he told me he wouldn't call you the morning after. Antonio would be so lucky to spend the night with all of this. <laughs> I see so it. So recognize what you have, mi amor. <laughs> I see it a little too much. You don't want me to get tired of you too soon, right? <laughs> pues déjame trabajar en paz. Paz? At work? Good luck. I'd show you paz if you didn't spend all your time between these four walls. Three walls. Three walls. The front is all windows. That doesn't make it any better. Worse, actually. <laughs> I don't think so. I got this gorgeous view of Sixth mm -hmm. Avenue. Get to watch the sun come up and go down every day behind the skyscrapers. Being a spectator is only fun in football, but life, you're missing out. You want to know what I'm actually missing out on? All of this, if you keep rushing me out. No, chiquitito, no. Tips. I'm missing out on tips because of you. Okay, pues ya me voy. But not because you told me to. You promised me dinner. How are you going to do that if you have empty pockets? Italian or Mexican, eh? <laughs> Antonio, papi! Como has estado? Chewy, what I tell you, huh? You keep coming, calling me papi and it's gonna get you in trouble, huh? I don't mind a little trouble, but uh, I have a girl. You're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to turn you down today. I'll try again tomorrow. I might change my mind. Yeah, okay, well, if you're not bothering her, you gotta come in here and you gotta bother me, huh? You're lucky I like the attention, otherwise I'd be kicking you out that door. Antonio, papi, you would never treat your favorite delivery man like that. Oh, no, 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 there's plenty of delivery men but you, baby, you delivery boy, okay? Men knows when they're overstepping. I'm a delivery man. I just have youthful energy. Ah, well, I look forward to the day that you outgrow some of that youthful energy a little bit because I can't do this for another year, let alone another decade. 
Todos los días contigo, ay Dios. Well, get used to it, papi. I'm going to be young forever. And don't think I didn't know this día español. Si se te está mejorando, así me gusta, papi. Forever is a long time, Chewy. Hey, more time for you to work on that Spanish. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a possibility for me. And you know what you could do with all that time? What? Work. I'm surprised they haven't fired you here. And if I keep letting you around here all hours of the day, Jim is going to fire me. So get, all right? You know how he is. He's got something against me? Not just you. Todos. So why have Rosa, Miguel, and Christian working for him? And why have you managing the place then? For the same reason those business people get you to deliver a single coffee. It's cheap and easy. Papi, I'm far from easy. Mm -hmm. Ask Rosa. Yeah, she told me. Easy's doing you a favor. Que favor? I want to know what kind of favor you did to get someone like Jim to hire you in here then. I stopped doing favors in my 20s, okay? Con ese hombre, mi friend, Brian, who got me the job forever ago, made me wait until the dead of winter to help me apply for this job. ¿Y por qué? Don't let the complexion fool you, okay? I get like you if not darker in the summer. So you think that man would have hired me then? <laughs> Nunca. That's why you can't come in here all the time, Chewy. He's looking for any reason to replace us with the next cheapest thing. Thing? We may work for them, but we're people too. Now we're labor first, baby. You're old enough to admit that. Without it, they don't got a business and we don't make a living. So we got to be careful. I've never seen that man come in here before. No. But he has people come in here and pretend to be customers so he can check up on them. That's why you can't come in here hollering like you own the place. And a matter of fact, that's why you got to go. Vamos. I take time out of my busy day to come in here and show you guys love. And this is what I get. A trabajar. Let's go. I work. I was delivering all morning downtown. Y ahorita me voy a chingar al próximo trabajo. Okay, okay. Porque I mean, I speak it, baby, but Jesus, I understood every word. Oh, 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 I love you, Antonio. I love you. Hey. I show you love. And what do I get? Nothing. No thank you. No chewy. You brighten my day. One of these days, I'm going to stop coming around here. You're all gonna miss me. All of you. Except you, man. Hey, man. <laughs> You'll always have me. The Eighty-four hours. <sighs> mira, mira, these damn kids always stick their shit under the table. They see a napkin right there, but no. That will make my job easier. And God forbid, I don't spend my evening pulling gum from the tables. <sighs> Even though my shift ended an hour ago. Okay, but see, that's all you. That's my what? My problem? That. You make a problem out of everything, and I was, fuck me, actually gonna say that it's your fault for seating them in that corner booth where you can't watch them. You know we always seat these damn kids in the back where we can keep an eye on them. Don't yell at me because you're, you're mad that your little boyfriend isn't here to pick you up yet. He said he was going to be here at nine. Ya van a ser. See, I knew it had nothing to do with cleaning up. You and that boy are stuck at the hip. I told you, I would close up. But no, you insisted on helping me because I too he's going to pick me up at nine. You know you can ride the subway by alone, right? All by yourself, it's healthy to have some independence. Mia. Don't be bitter because I have a man who cares about my well-being and is Mija, no Mia. Bitch, if bitter had a name, it'd be Rosa. Don't put that on me. I'm just telling you, instead of staying up here complaining and making a problem where there isn't one, you can head home. I could use the peace and quiet. Don't need some little girl with the attitude correcting my Spanish, neither. If I don't correct you, how are you going to learn? Oh, oh, so correction is okay here? But when I correct you on how to wipe down your section, all of a sudden there isn't room for correction? Huh. Don't start with me, Tony. 
And the correction isn't the issue, by the way. The attitude. Check it. And check that dirty ass rag, too. I don't need Jim making a scene because you're using what looks like a jock shop that's been to one too many sex parties, okay? Oh, come on. Stop the attitude. You can't walk around with a scold on your face all day. You get wrinkles, mija. Here. So tell me again, why can't you head home without him? Chewie doesn't want me riding the subway alone anymore. ¿Y por qué? I didn't tell you. You gonna tell me or what? It's embarrassing. What's more embarrassing than anything I've already told you? You haven't told me anything <sighs> to. Victor, the vegetable oil. All right. Remind me. Mm. Okay. <sighs> Two weeks ago, I was on the subway and I'm minding my business. Okay? Yeah, and everyone else is too. Don't pretend. El chisme. Ha, si. El chisme. Always with the el chisme. I know you. <laughs> si, pues. Pero let me finish. Okay. The night before, Chewie told me he couldn't do another night of burnt rice. So, I decided to surprise him with a pizza from his favorite place on Bleecker. Pero, they close at 10. So, I had to run there and then hop on the subway at West 4. And you know how crazy people are at the top of Christopher Street right there. Get to the point, mama. Uh, okay, okay, don't rush me. <clears throat> so, I'm walking down the steps and I see this homeless man yelling at this white guy in Spanish and I, you know, I, I had to stop and see what Okay, was yeah, it. you had to stop, uh-huh. I did, okay? I thought I could do my good deed of the day and go over and translate. Chismos, that, that's how you say it, right? Chismos. See, si, but listen. So, I go over, and as I'm walking in their direction, the white guy takes off running as soon as he sees that I have the homeless man attention. And I say, ¿Qué pasa, señor? And when I tell you, he loses it. Let me show you. This is him. Pinche vieja, fuiste tú la que se robó mi comida. Te recuerdo de anoche. And I'm not trying to make a scene, so I'm trying to get him to calm down. But he keeps insisting. I'm this woman who stole his food, so now he's trying to take the pizza box from me. And I'm pulling it back, and we're getting into, like, you know, the Didi Hale. And he says, vieja panzona, vieja panzona. He keeps saying, and now I'm getting offended because I've been watching my figure. Oh, that know? for some pizza? It was a meat lover's. That shit ain't cheap. Oh. Well, maybe he was right. ¿Qué dijiste? Nothing. Finish your story. So, I'm pulling it back, and when I finally get it out of his hands and turn around to leave this motherfucker, pushes me! And when I tell you I was this close, this close, to falling into the tracks, this close, I'm laying on the ground, Shot, but still with a pizza on top of my chest. And just when I think he's going to leave, he grabs the pizza from me. He calls me a vieja ratera again and spits on me. Yo, don't laugh. It's not funny. When I tell you Chewie was pissed, he almost went back to the city to look for the guy. Mm. So what did you eat that night? What's the matter? I just told you that I almost died. Dime. I had to make us some rice and beans. We ate that with tostadas. Mm. <laughs> that boy wanted to go back to the city to get another pizza. He may love you, but he hates your cooking more. So why does he insist on riding home together now, huh? I told you. Better. Mm, he probably doesn't want you losing meals anymore. There's a reason we barely let you in the kitchen here. <laughs> oh, please. My cooking isn't that bad. Uh. Antonio, papi, ¿cómo estuvo el día? Oh, oh, oh. 
good. Except for this hooligan who keeps coming here two, three, two, three times a day to keep bothering me. Different day, same shit. All this love. And it's still always taken for granted. Mm. Look, that's why you missed the spot right there. Oh. That's Rosa's table. You should go tell her. No, nope, boys. It looks fine then, I think. Yeah, that's what I thought. Julie, you said nine. It's almost ten. If we're going to be going back and forth Complain together, on the yeah. way. Complain on the way. The pizza place is still open. If we hurry, we can get a pie. Come on, get your stuff. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Let's go. Bye, Tony. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Get home safe. Make sure you hold the box, Chewy. Sorry to be reaching out so late. Yeah, I, well, I didn't want to wait until morning. Yeah, again, great, huge apologies. I, I just remember you telling me to call you with any uh, emergencies. Yeah, no, no, I, I wouldn't call unless. Uh, yeah, well, I'm. Uh, uh, well, I just want you to. I just need to let you know that well, the register's just a little bit short again. Uh, yeah, no, we're short $250 again today as well. I know, I know, look, I've been super careful. You know, I don't, I don't let nobody have access to it. No, no, it's just that I, uh, uh, well, I have to step away, you know, during breaks and when it gets busy. I, I know, I know. Yes, unacceptable. Yeah, okay, I got it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I promise I'll be more attentive. Uh, yeah, yes, okay, okay, good, good. Hello? Yeah, that's right, motherfucker. That's what I thought you lucky you hung up on me, you mother. Mm. Seventy-six. Here. If you're so sure, then why are you whispering? Because I've seen Antonio before, he's had his first coffee, and that's not a risk I'm willing to take. Hello? Mi amor, he's not here. Come on, take off your clothes. We're in the clear. Chewy, I said we'd come early to have breakfast together. That's it. You said morning delight. I said let's stop at morning delight. Bonito, bien bonito, pero tontito. <laughs> okay, fine. But I'm not sharing any of my jalapeno cream cheese bagel. You promised we split it. And it's on a cinnamon raisin bagel. Mmm. Chewy, you said we share. That's when I thought this was more than just breakfast. You took away the delight, and I took away the bagel. That's how it works, baby. Keep playing with me, and you won't be getting any of this delight anytime soon. It's already been a while. Chew. Okay, okay, I was just poking fun. No, you weren't. You were pointing out at the fact that we haven't Jeez, had- Jeez, please, say it louder in case someone outside didn't hear you. And yes, I was just poking fun, which you are not. My workday starts in an hour. I don't have time for fun. Dealing with these people, you better just hope you leave here sane. Baby, they took that from you a long time ago. Ha ha. Ha ha.
I'm going to show you there's a world of fun out there, especially outside of this place. And these people. I don't know how, but I will. You don't ever feel weird? About what? I'm working here. Waiting on these people. I've seen your clientele. And a bit of them, they're out there. The way they talk to you and Antonio. Um, sometimes. I, I try to do things the right first time so I don't have to hear anything from them. I learned that the grady comes with the territory. Te the territory? I don't think people sign up for insults and shit when they, come, when they become waiters. No, but when you become a waiter and you know how people treat us outside of work, you expect it at work, especially working here. You don't know who Jim, you don't know who knows Jim, so we just have to be extra careful with the way we talk, so, you know. Do you have shitty expectations about those rich guys you deliver to downtown? No. So you expect every single person you deliver to to be generous and nice? For the most part. It depends where I'm, where I'm delivering. You see, most of the larger buildings, I, I, I don't even see the guy. I leave it downstairs with the security people, who more often than not look like us. Yeti? They leave it with them. Don't you think that that's shitty too? They complain when it's minutes late, but when you get it, they're early and they don't even have the time to hand you the nickels and pennies they call the tip. I don't think about it too much. I make the delivery and hopefully there's a tip, but I don't have enough time to think about it. I'm on to the next. You, on the other hand, have to sit through their shitty attitudes about the food, the service, and even down to the fucking temperature in this place. That. That's how. Yeah. But I don't give them a chance to treat me any kind of way either. I feel like being a server, I get to sort of even out the playing field. I have some sort of power too. Not just them. <laughs> no. Que bien preocupada de quien conoce al patrón. Yeah. And I am. But that only goes so far. I might let them talk to me crazy. But that doesn't mean they get away with it. I have some power. What power? <laughs> you never heard, don't fuck with the people handling your food, huh? These rich, these, these rich folks don't care about that. They'll eat a shit sandwich as long as they got, they got to talk down to you in the process. And then for dessert, they'll complain to your boss as a treat. That's their satisfaction. Not the fact that the issue was resolved, but that they were seen and heard. But I'm seen in her, too. But seen as what? A person? An equal? No, nunca. Your title? Waiter. Y tu? Hmm? At least I'm seen. Those people don't even acknowledge you. I'm sure that's why they love to have their meal delivered to them. They only have to talk to a voice on the phone, and that's it. Then, it magically shows up to them. And maybe they'll throw some chum change at you. Good. Ignore me. I don't care, as long as I get the tip. There's all these people who want to be seen and heard at all times. You being one of them, but not me. I want to disappear into the wind. Chewie, no you don't. Everyone wants to be acknowledged. Even us. What do you mean by us? Us! Los pobres, mi amor. Maybe the people with papers, pero yo, no. I want to blend into the background. That's how I like it, and that's how I make my money. Mr. I'm going to be more than a delivery boy doesn't want to be seen? It doesn't make sense. Delivery man. Just because I hope to be more than what I currently am doesn't mean that I'm ashamed of it. Wanting more for myself doesn't mean letting other people get the better of me when I finally get it. And for someone who's constantly shitting on my dreams, you sure do seem to be, you sure do seem to dream of being one of these white people who have the world revolving around them. It's too early for this. You know what? We can ask Antonio. Papi. No, no, no. Unless that third cup right there is for me and it's black coffee with five sugars, don't ask me nothing. <laughs> yes, Tony, of course it's for you. Here you go. 
<clears throat> okay, shoot. What's the big question? Okay, so we want to know if you'd rather be a delivery... No, you are asking the wrong question. Let me ask. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, hang on. <clears throat> Toby. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's better to be seen and acknowledged as a server, okay, server, or move in the background of everything like a delivery man? So let me get this question straight. Would I rather be seen and stepped on or ignored and stepped on? I'd rather not be stepped on. Estos niños, Diosito, ayúdame. Come on, Tony. Of course, when you put it like that, but we don't really have that as an option. We can just tell these white folks, no, or tip me more. I do. Your question is too big. No one can answer it. What works for you? Answer that first and then demand it. You can't be a submissive bottom about life, kids. <laughs> now, that that's out the way, Jim is on my ass about a couple missing hundred dollars. So I gotta count this money again. Learn how to count, people. Come on, Chewy. You gotta get going. Those white folks will notice your absence, but they will notice the absence of their food, okay? Okay, okay. I'm going. Is everything okay with Antonio? Yeah, sort of. There's been some cash missing from the register the last couple of weeks, and Jimmy's pressuring him to find out what's going on with that. Someone stealing money, you think? No, I don't think so. It's only a few hundred dollars total, but you know, like you said, these people don't care if they're right or wrong as long as they get to degrade you in the process. Antonio isn't like us. Because he's a submissive bottom? <laughs> <laughs> because he's just American enough to spoke to and not act, but not American enough to be respected. They'll pull him out of the background to take their frustration out on and then push him back into when they're done. The moment as they ponder, is existence theirs, ours? You gotta go. Ya tan pronto. <laughs> you don't want to make Tony's life hard, do you? No, pues no. Good, because then I have to deal with it. So come on and go. Shoo, shoo. Okay, okay. Bye. You don't have to shoo me like that. <sighs> Wait. Venga, seca. Oh, I'm taking this with me. Hasta luego, mi amor. <laughs> oh, wait. What's a submissive bottom? <laughs> Fifty one. Chewie, it's too early for this nonsense and your girlfriend isn't even here right now. I know, that's actually why I'm here. But your hostility, man, chill. I'm not hostile, I'm busy. Something you should be familiar with. I'm familiar. Rosa was right. Bitter. Chewie, honestly, I don't need this shit right now. Okay, okay. Just tell me what you need from me and go. I'm here because I need a little favor. Come on, out with it, what? Can, can, can Rosa have off next week? I know it's short notice, but things have been a little tense here lately, and I, we've been arguing. And I just want to do something nice for her, you know? Show her that there's more to, to life and, and existing than just this. Like what? Look, I didn't mean anything wrong by it. Sorry. It's, it's just easy for us to feel like characters in another person's life. Moving around and, and for other people, it can get tiring, that's all. 
it's okay, it's true. I'm just feeling exactly that, like that right now, except that I don't feel like a character in someone else's life, but more like a, an object or a tool. Is this about that thing with Jim? The register still coming up short? Yeah, and I just don't. I don't know what the fuck is happening. But I'm still the one that has to fix it, you know? Like, this isn't my fucking restaurant. But no, that bastard's too busy with his dinners and weekends upstate and the Hamptons, wherever the fuck. But I'm here. I'm always here. And it would at least be bearable if at least I was treated like a, a person. I have to be the one to deal with the embarrassment of asking people who he already treats and pays like shit if they're taking a couple hundred dollars from a man with three homes. I hope you don't think they view you differently because of it. But also that tells me how much he and everyone loves and respects you. I, I know that. No, I do. I do. But I also know that I'm not included in the everyone or anyone. There's always this feeling that I'm like in between spaces, like touching just the edge of all these different things, but never like being in them, just bridging these different people and experiences to one another because they need one another to exist in their own little worlds. And, and just the way that that's just been too much lately. They need you too. I, I just feel like I don't belong, you know? Even in the unbelonging that you and Rosa get to share. Antonio, I I'm sorry you're feeling that way. Rosa and I love you, like family. That, that's the issue though, the like part, the like family. I wanna be family to someone or something, not just similar to or proximity to or whatever. Look, I was excommunicated from people who called me family just for being and only to have the people I call family taken from me. Now, I'm just on the outskirts of everybody else's needs. I'm sorry, I, I just wanted to ask you for a favor, but I don't think it's right anymore. No, just ask, just fucking ask, what is it? Chewie, don't think that I'm telling you or anyone else what you're doing is wrong, or that you're doing something wrong. You can ask whatever it is you're gonna ask. I'm not, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a little frustrated with my position right now, you know? Are you feeling like a submissive bottom? <laughs> Rosa told me what it is. <laughs> of course she did. <laughs> that girl works too much, okay? That's, that's actually what I wanted to talk to you about. I wanted to see if she could have off on... Oh God, please! Take her out, please. Maybe that'll be the day we don't get a single complaint. Well, you'll still be around. Fuck you. Where are you gonna take her? I was thinking of taking her out to Long Island. I know it's not much, but the city sort of loses its magic when all you do is bust your ass in it. I love it here, but I just feel like she's a bit unhappy with it all. I overheard this man on, on, on the street tell someone on the phone that the way he stays in love with the city is to leave it. I assume that all these rich people do too. You know, they have their second homes and they take all those trips all the time. We can't do that, but there's Long Island. That's all you got? Long Island? What's the alternative, Jersey? No, no, you're right. Maybe a beach walk or something. I always enjoy watching the sunsets on the Hudson. I imagine it must be 10 times better on the Atlantic. Mm. I just want to give her some of those moments where you look out and somehow you look in, seeing something for yourself in all the grandness, making her feel bigger than this. Some people can't see that for themselves, truly. The world has a way of just collapsing itself on top of us and making us believe that our lives only exist within these, this. Look, Rosa cares deeply for you. And for that very reason, she won't allow herself to dream 
of more than she currently has because with that comes the possibility of loss. Loss is part of the deal when it comes to life. We can't escape it. I just feel she's trapped herself into thinking that she's safe from loss because she holds everyone at a distance. Yeah, but I think she knows loss is unavoidable, Chewie. But unlike us, she recognizes that the magnitude of the loss may be bigger than what she's willing to risk. But it all comes to an end at some point. Loss is going to happen. Yeah, but if you hold people at a distance, sometimes that softens the blow. That's not a life worth living. Mm -hmm. If someone can make her see that, it's you. She recognizes that. She doesn't want to lose you, Chewie. Lose me? I love that girl. I'm not going anywhere. I put up with her breath in the morning, and that's enough to push anyone away. I'm sure she's told you about our baggage, but I promised her. I'm not going away. Ever. You can't promise that, Chewie. Why not? Because the, that only builds onto her fear. You're making all these grand promises about always being there, and you just don't know if that'll be true. I know that'll be true. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you're not, you're not. You're not going anywhere? right now you don't see yourself without her right now now you're taking her shitty side i'm not taking her i'm not taking nobody's sides look okay you're both still so young and you think so much of life is either right or wrong and and that's not the case the way she navigates life is different than yours but that doesn't make either of you right or wrong i'm just trying to get you to understand that you can't change someone else's life experience you can't change how they how they view the world. I don't want to change her. I, I just want to show her more. No, no. You want to show her how you see life. And that's just not possible, Chewie. Meet her halfway. Like, there's a whole gray area where the compromise can be good for both. Oh, hey. Mm, hey. Chewie, ¿qué haces aquí? I can't surprise you with my presence. I'm, I'm used to Antonio's neglect, pero tú. Mm. <laughs> Always the victim of something. <sighs> I can't be surprised to see you. Normally, you finish your morning deliveries before you come and give me my afternoon headache. Well, today you get an extra one. Oh, aren't you sweet? Hola, mama. <laughs> morning, Tony. He's not causing you too much trouble, is he? You know there's always trouble if Chewie's around. <laughs> Chewy, you gotta get going, puppy. You're buying dinner tonight, and I'm not setting for something cheap either, okay? So, vamos, a trabajar. Go make those tips. <laughs> don't miss me too much. Oh, how about we don't miss you at all? <laughs> Uno de estos días, Antonio, me vas a extrañar. Huh. Acuérdate, papá. Okay. <laughs> now. Why was he really here? Nope, nope, I'm not getting in the middle of this. No way. Tony, tell me. <sighs> okay, but you gotta promise not to be upset with me, okay? Okay. He asked me and I just couldn't resist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he practically forced me into it. Come on, come on and spill I, it. It just happened and I, I just couldn't. Tony, ya! I we're having an affair! Oh, todo eso for just a little joke. You like to see me mad, don't you? Are you gonna tell me or not? Rosa moves to the front door to flip the closed sign to open. No. Okay, fine, don't tell me. But that's why you're cleaning the bathroom today. Don't punish me for your boyfriend's secrets, okay? Two people enter the restaurant. Um, hello! Take any table you like. Would you like to freshen up? The bathroom is right back there. <laughs> Eleven hours. Rosa is picking up the final table for the night. Chewie, have a seat. I'm just finishing up here. I'll get you something while you wait. Figure it, mi amor. Pepsi? No. Un agua mejor. I can't believe it's still getting this warm. It's supposed to be fall already. 
Toma. ¿Y Antonio? He's in the back, making the schedule for next week. <laughs> you look tired. Is that your cute little way of telling me I look ugly today? No, just a little beat up. You ran into that guy that stole the pizza from me on West 4th, didn't you? <laughs> no, but I wish. <laughs> just a long day downtown. It's been crazy down there all day, especially in the mornings. They said we're, we're gonna have to come in an hour earlier from now on, at least for a while. What did you say? I didn't say anything. Give them a reason to replace me? No, como crees? You really don't mind taking the subway with me every night? Because you don't have to. Why do you do that? Anytime I try to do something nice because I want to, you somehow convince yourself that it's a burden for me. No. Just look really out of it, Chewie. I'm just making sure it's not, um... Do you not like it? Having someone to ride the train all the way to Queens? Having a shoulder to lie your head on? Because if you don't like it, I'll stop. It's not like I'll miss it. <laughs> your hair loses the smell of roses after a long day. Especially if you worked in the kitchen. Then it smells like curly fries. <laughs> mm, curly stop! fries. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just don't know how you do it. How haven't they fired you yet? Don't they need delivery boys most in the evening? Delivery men! <laughs> and I just told you they do, but it also gets busy in the mornings. Good tips, too. Which is why I don't mind being a little tired now. I get to come here and head home with you. Hmm. The tips are really that much better? You can't even imagine. There's this guy on the 59th floor of the South Tower who gives me 59 bucks every morning if I get his breakfast to him by 8.30. A dollar for every floor. Huh. Oh, when am I going to see some of this fortune you've been making, huh? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about before we head out. Yeah? I made exciting plans for us this weekend. Uh, but Chewie, you know that I... Before you get all worked up, I already asked Antonio, and he said it's cool. And also, it's only Monday, so you have all week to get yourself dolled up. Okay, pues, but, um, what's, what's this exciting plan? Remember you told me you never seen the ocean? I want to take you. Show you how grand life could be. Jones Beach. It's out in Long Island, the perfect place. Um, Chewy, <laughs> it's September. I know I have thick skin, but uh, no. Hear me out. It's better in the fall. No people to bother us. We're not going to go into the water. Just look out into it. See how massive the world is. See how much it has to offer. <sighs> Maybe, pero Jose, you remember Jose? He said that he'd let us use his car. We can drive wherever we want. Grab dinner in whatever town we want. Not just the places a train could take us, but any and everywhere. I'll even drive us to the moon if you want. I'm sure there's a road for it somewhere. Out in the clouds is where you live. Not yet, but soon. One day I'm going to make a name for myself. I'm going to go to school and get one of those jobs that has an office in the sky. <laughs> and I'm going to be the Queen of Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I heard they don't have one yet. <laughs> you got to let yourself dream, Rosa. It'll make the hustle and bustle of every day feel not only tolerable, but enjoyable. What's life if you can't hope for a better tomorrow? Chewie, this is the better tomorrow. This is as good as it gets for us, puppy. Why strive for things that are never going to happen? We are living the life that people back home can only dream of. And my, that's my point exactly. They're still dreaming of something. Every day after work, I make my way to the payphone that faces both the Statue of Liberty and I call back home and I describe in, in specific detail everything the city has to offer so that they have everything they need to imagine what a better tomorrow can look like. You don't need to know what's coming in order to hope for more. I've had enough disappointment in life to hope for something as ridiculous as dreams of office jobs in the sky. Do you know why I haven't bothered to see the ocean since I got to New York? Because you're always in here. 
Even when it's not your shift, you're in here busting your ass, and for what? It's like you're afraid to have enough free time to wonder about the new possibilities. The beach has nothing to offer me. What is there to see? Some water crashing against the shore? That doesn't bring money. Chewy, listen, let me ask you something. Are your people eating off the dreams you're feeding them? Or is it from the money you sending them that keeps food on the table? That is their dream, Chewy. To have food, to have water, electricity. Dreams like yours are for people who never had to wonder how they're going to pay rent and have enough money to send back home. We can't afford that, Joey. We can't. If you can't afford that, fine. But I won't let you tell me that I'm too poor to dream. Life is hard enough as it is, so what if my hopes for the future never happen? I want to grow up to be 99 years old and, and, and keep wondering what I, what I can find to hope for. I can't become someone who just sits around waiting for death to come for me. I want to meet death at the end of my life and smile because I know that I dreamed everything this life had to offer, even if I never made it a reality. I won't have to lie on my deathbed and wonder, what if? What if I had tried? And I can't become someone who suffocates in the clouds, Chewie. You stay up there too long and you meet that faster than you should have. Ground yourself in everything you have. I'm not telling you that I'm miserable. I'm telling you I'm content with what this life has handed me, okay? I look around and see what is given to everyone else, but I don't compare it to what I have. I make joy out of the life I live. It might be small, it might be shit to others, but I'm happy to bust my ass to live in a small apartment with three other women and still have enough left over to wonder, not to wonder about food tomorrow, okay? I don't need to see the ocean to know what life has to offer. I have what life offered me, and I'm happy with it. Are you? Yes. Happy doesn't get excited at the gift of a knockoff purse from Canal Street. A party who wants to have what they have. That purse, that purse, that's how I live my life. I may never have the real thing, but I sure as hell will do everything I can to make it as real as possible. They may head to their beach homes in the Hamptons, but I'm gonna get a taste of the experience by going to Jones Beach. They may work a nine to five in those giant towers every day, but every time I ride the elevator up to the 59th floor, I stand a little taller and imagine that it's my reality too. Oh, Is this you telling me that you don't want to go to the beach this weekend? Linda's son's birthday is coming up. We all promised we'd chip in to get him the bike he's been wanting. Get him out of the apartment. The weekend shifts just leave me with more tips. I'll cover your loss. Chewy, I don't need a handout. It's not a handout in the way that you think it is. It's me extending my handout but it's to pull you up to the side of the possibilities outside of just working. I'm not taking your money. <sighs> Fine, don't take my money, but we'll use the money I already put aside for the trip to Jones Beach to pay for the bike. No money lost, just reinvested. If you can say yes to this, if you can't say yes to this, then where do you see us? My crazy dreams aside, do you see any possibility for an us outside of this? So now, what we have it isn't enough for you either. No, come on, don't do that. You know what I mean. I enjoy our time together, but I hope that one day you won't find the need to hold me at a distance. If you enjoy what we have now, why do we always have to imagine a different future. Me wanting more for us is, isn't only some, some silly dream for me. <laughs> what more is there, Chewy? Huh? We see each other every day. Most days, we're either at my place or yours. We watch silly TV together before bed. And that's enough for me. That's enough for me too, but... 
There's always a but with you. It can never be left. I want a family. One that I don't have to try and picture when I hear their voices over the phone. But one that I can touch, love, care for. I'm not going to apologize for wanting that. And let alone for wanting that with you. I, I know we haven't done... Stop. No, you always pretend like this is something that stands between us and... Chewy, I'm asking you to stop. I'm not saying we have to do it anytime soon. I'm in no hurry. And, and, and you have your reasons for... So respect that! Respect that I don't want to have this conversation right now. You never want to have this conversation. That would be enough for me to have the conversation. To know why you don't want to... Respect don't call for a reason, Chewie. It does when I'm left to wonder if you even really like me. You don't talk to me, ever. At least not about the shit that matters. Like what? Like why you flinch at night when I touch you. Why you lock the door when you use the bathroom. Why you turn away from me. When you feel that I'm asleep, why? Because. Why you won't let me? It's not easy to. Look at you, struggling to even come up with a lie. Fuck you, Chewy. Finally, an honest reaction from you. No, no. You don't get to push me there and then be hurt by it. Okay? You don't get to play victim here. Not I'm not about a victim. This. You are. Or at least you're pretending to be. You don't know what it is. You don't know what it's like to be me. You're right. I don't. But it's not because I don't care. Or ask. Or wonder. That's on you. And if you can't live with that, fine. Just know I'll be here. Waiting. For when you can finally share whatever it is that's holding you back. I'll be here. Thanks for the drink. I'll see you at home. My place or yours? Yours. Come on, spill it. Look, anytime that boy comes here, you have a smile on your face that outlives his presence. So what's going on, huh? He broke up with you? Do I gotta go find him and fuck him up? No, he didn't. Okay. He started to talk about family. I don't think a day goes by that he doesn't tell me about his mother. But today, he started to talk about the unrealistic reality of wanting a family with me someday. So wait, you're telling me that this boy's hope for a future with you is making you upset? Estoy loca. No, I just, I have a complicated relationship with family. Mm -hmm. Rosa, anyone like us has a complicated relationship with family, okay? Chewy included. Like us? Yes, us. People who leave their families for something better. I left my family behind for something better. Chewie dreams of the day of returning to his family with something better. That's the difference. Tony, I never want to go back. Okay. I was eight years old when I watched my drunken piece of shit of father beat my bloodied mother unconscious for the last time. Last time? You, you came here with her after that? No. I lived with ese pendejo for 10 years after that. But it was in that moment that I started to plan my escape from him. 
and everything that resembled family in that way. What I didn't know is that Mima was planning the same thing. The next morning, she was gone, vanished, okay? Like she never existed. And my father went on living that way too. For a decade, I put up with his, with, with his, at 18, I met this boy, Daniel, who wanted to get married and he promised me to get me out of here, or out of there, okay? I, I, I didn't love him, but desperation will make anything seem better than it was. Two weeks after we got married, we were in Astoria. Michaela was the woman I became as we drove up to the border and eventually threw it. It took two months. Two months after, after that for Daniel to become my father. Drunk and violent. And, and I took after my mother and took off after he knocked me on conscience. I didn't want a single hint of his existence in my life, so I left the fake ID. And for the first time in my life, for the first time, I decided. I decided, I, I decided what was going to be of me. And even though I didn't have any idea of what that meant, I promised myself. I promised myself I will get on my, I promised myself I will go on by, by my own self. And, and, and you have. Yes, I have. Rose, no matter how hard we try, we can't escape pain. Mira, you can leave places and people, but behind, no, mi amor. That you cannot do. The physical being or place may no longer be in your life, but that experience is always going to be with you. You can grow from it, but you leave it behind, <laughs> no. As people who have had to leave a previous life behind, we have this tendency to talk about ourselves and, and, and our issues and our lives before a before and after. Pero no, mija. It's the same story. You can say, I left my family behind, but it stays with you in the same way your shadow follows you around all day. Now, maybe behind you in the morning, but when the sun starts to wane in the sky, no. Now it's in front of you, stretched out further than your whole body and unavoidable. Don't let pain hold you back from love. The two things are often intertwined. I fucking love New York, but that doesn't mean I don't long for a place I can't return to. I miss people who I don't even know anymore, and my voice still shakes every time I call home or, or what's left of that. I can't build another future with Chewie just to find out he's like all of the men in my life. <laughs> I built myself up enough times to know I can't rebuild from the ground up again. But Mama, we're more capable than we give ourselves credit for. Easy for you to say. Nothing ever seems to bother because you. Because I don't let it. <laughs> I've lived through enough of that shit to know that most things are not worth my energy. I save that for the people that I love and the things that I love. Love is one of the few things worth risking loss over. Now, in my opinion, you have it easy. You've lived through enough to ground yourself in yourself, and that's something most of us don't learn until we're well into our 30s or 40s. <laughs> when I first got to New York, back in the 80s, I found myself searching for a home I longed for in men. Now, I always say, you can make a shelter out of people, but not a home. Matthew. He was the first one I ever felt at home with after getting here. 
He always made me call him Matt because at the time my accent was so thick I could only say Machu. And I remember I'd sit in his apartment watching cartoons until he got home and that's how I learned English. That and the vinyl collection that he had with all those little things that he brought into my life. It was shelter, love, and language. It just all reassured me that home was possible outside of family. Now losing him was the best kind of pain I had. His loss like hollowed me out, but eventually I found all the things he gave me and more in myself. And I was able to grow from it. He left you? Mama, so many men left me. They left us. I'm lucky I wasn't one of them. I made a home out of him. And when he shut me out, I felt like I lost a part of myself, you know? He told me that he wanted to spend his final moments with family. And that left me wondering, well, what, what that made of me? A week later, his apartment is cleared out. Locks are changed two days after that. I never even said goodbye. Evicted from love and shelter. Tony, I didn't know that you... No, no, you didn't. But, but I tell you to reassure you that even, even at the perceived finality of death, love still finds a way. And here you see me in all my glory. <laughs> Not a day goes by that I don't think about him. But I survived. So take a chance on Chewie. He's a good boy. Build something with him. And if it crumbles, you'll rebuild. We always do. Life doesn't stop in moments of bliss, unfortunately. But luckily, neither does it stop in tragedy. You can't live life standing still. You can't clean standing still either, so let's go to it. I want to go home. I got a man waiting for me. <laughs> and you too. Come on, vamos. Tony. Gracias. Let's go. Thirty-two minutes. Rosa, baby, when you get a chance, could you uh, check on table three? They need refills. Okay. Twenty-five minutes. Ginger ale. Nineteen minutes. And more water for tea. Twelve minutes. Eleven, ten, nine, eight minutes, seven, six, five, four, three, two. This bastard, this fucking city is falling apart, he couldn't even care less. This fucking guy! Pero, pero, Chewie is supposed to be picking me up. He has to be heading up here now. Can we wait no, for no, him? No, no, mommy, mommy, we gotta close this place. I'm not getting fired by that piece of shit for staying open. We gotta get home. We shut down the subway. See, better. we have to close up. Come on, we don't want people coming in here. We gotta close. We have to go. I 
keep calling Jim to ask if we can stay, but nothing. There's nothing. There's no, he won't pick up another. There's no reception. We can't lose our job. No, I'm not leaving without him. He always pick up. He always picks me up to go home together. Yesterday, he was a little upset, but but I'm sure he's coming. Okay, I'll ride home with you, honey. But we can't stay here. Uh, no. He's okay, right? Right? Yeah. He's, he's probably just caught up with, um, with all the people in the streets. He, he's super caring. He, he probably volunteered too. Yeah, he, he, he likes those people on the radio who, who, who wanted to help. Okay, I'll let him know. We'll let him know that I took you home. Okay, we'll leave him know. The feeling is the same, falling in love and losing it. It consumes you. Not a moment goes by that you don't consider the person. They pop up in everything you do. I've ascribed him into everything. Time, sound, objects. I'm searching for places where he's still alive, in some form, where reality can't come crashing down on me too, where I don't have to imagine a world or a future without him. I've never yearned for the past before. I always found comfort in the present, living moment to moment, where expectation can't haunt me the way the future does. But now, the present is unbearable to imagine, too. Wadding through the, de the debris of possibilities. Linda's boyfriend was a volunteer at Ground Zero. He said he felt some sort of obligation to help. When he came to the apartment after 48 hours of waiting, his clothes hung from him with a weight that made its own presence. I remember he stripped down at the front door and his clothes just stood straight up from the debris. This white ghostly, this white ghostly figure of remains 
He haunted us for days. No amount of detergent or bleach. Fortunate is a word I hear a lot lately. Fortunate to still be alive. There was this woman on the news last night that said she was making her way to work that day when she spilled coffee on her blouse and had to turn around and change. And how fortunate I was to have misfortune, she said. Then she started talking about everything she's been doing ever since she In between the anger, I tried to feel fortunate. They commemorated Chewy. Placed all these flowers on his bike, still chained to a post not far from the debris. He always had this tendency to park his bike right in front of whatever he was delivering. He liked to make his presence known <laughs> from his arrival to his departure, he said. I told him to stop being so bold about it all and do what all the other delivery book delivery men <laughs> did. And park across the street or around the corner. He used to never listen, but for some reason he did that day. <laughs> it's something tangible to know that I had something to do with his existence. Nosotros no siempre tenemos esa fortuna. Muchos no tuvieron esa fortuna. It only took two days for there to be a list of over 700 undocumented people who were missing missing to the state because we knew we knew where they were but they won't even acknowledge how do you force people to live in the shadows and then also die in them all of those families are getting to experience some sort of closure or or y nosotros They hide us behind kitchen doors, reception desk, and apparently under the bricks too. They demanded that we prove that our loved ones were there. But how do you prove you existed when they didn't acknowledge you when you lived? But how do we rebuild from here when we are included in the hope, the dream? for clarity you know we sort of open it up like that 
and then maybe what you liked about it, and then maybe how to move it forward. If anyone has any sort of comments like that, and those in that framework, happy to listen to you. Hey, Cass, do you want to come back out for a second? Thank you. Maria, Chris, Terry. This has been a very accelerated um, experience for us. So thank you for trusting me and us. And, and, and I think it went really well. Thank you both. And thank you very much, Terry. Questions for anyone? Questions for clarity? Is there anything that didn't make sense? You know, what was that? I think it was very clear. It was clear. Very clear. Thank you. Thank you. So clear. That's good writing. That's good, yeah. yeah. The writer likes to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the writer, everyone. This is Leo. Woo! What did you like about it? <coughs> the story, of the characters, a moment. Are you? Okay. I can't really, can I give me a little house lights? I'm, I'm not able to see anyone. Thank you, Emma. Okay, so hi. one thing, hi, France. Uh, <laughs> one thing that I really like, uh, for the actors, you guys were amazing. Rosa, you had such emotion, and I was really caught up in it. One thing that I really liked, um, sort of a writing note, how the, where we were, like we were able to tell where we were in the time period before we ever got to the fact that we were in 2001 because uh, prop, uh, we had the Blackberry. And so it was like a, a very distinct phone choice that I really enjoyed. So I was like, okay, so I know we're not anywhere close to <laughs> so it was, we were, I was able to place it um, very well early on in the show. Writing wise, I liked how we had sprinkle of information. Like uh, it was September, so it's too cold to go to the beach. And so I'm like, okay, so now I know we're earlier in the 2000s, in September, in the fall. And you know, I really liked that structure. One writing thing that kind of threw me in for a loop for a couple of minutes is that when Chewie went to Tony to go ask if Rosa could have time off. He repeats the question twice, but he says, I have a favor to ask when they're both standing. And then when they're both sitting, they kind of recycle that bit. And it's like, he's already asked the favor. Right. So why is it being presented like new information? That's wonderful. So I wanted to know if that was just a little bit of an oversight, because, you know, I was looking at it for writing too, because I write, but, you know, it is, some, it is something to sort of gloss over that you don't notice through the process, but that was one thing that I wanted to point out that kind of had me, it took me out of the story for a minute, but it was very easy to go right back into it. But other than that moment, I really have no other, no other you know, criticisms, I guess you could say. I love the messages about immigration and culture that was very well settled into the story. And really love the show overall. You've got great comments and you're spot on, you know, that sometimes uh, we have to write things, we writers have to write things um, for the audience three times, say them three times, you know, so the audience gets it. So maybe sometimes we, we write it a little bit more, overwrite it. That's, I love overwritten plays because you can always go and chop it, you know. I think that Leo's done a great job at lifting it um, off the page and bring it, but that's a great point about, should it be that repeated, is he, is he asking, what happened to make him ask again, yeah. you know, I think I might ask that, that. And, um, and the time period, yes, to make it clearly set it at, in that time period, props did help, and I think their, I think they, I think their attitude and their character development were, they captured something that was the turn of the century, you know? And I, I, I don't know what it is yet, but they, I think they did some good work research for that. Anyone else about what you liked about it or how to move it forward? What can we do to 
make this into the full length play, develop it further. Look at the feeling with the uh, stage directions, that those were <clears throat> in place of uh, more dialogue, which I think that might be a place to expand for. more. Okay. That, I, I, I um, yes. There are places where uh, dialogue could come out of those stage directions. We do have to talk to get what we want in the theater, you know, and a lot of times those stage directions are layered in so that we'll come back and revise that. You know? I think that this piece initially started out in my playwriting class that an exercise that Leonardo did um, from a picture. And it was a monologue picture exercise. And then it grew into this um, within the past, I don't know, you know how, how long you, how long you that sit down with it? Uh, like five months. Five months you've been? Uh, yeah, brewing. like from the beginning to here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially the past uh, three weeks. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, we want to develop it. We want it to be seen. I think it's a, um, a story that hasn't been seen. And that's what really turns me on and makes me passionate about it. The, part, the part's about family and having to create your own family from the debris of what was left of family um, is super important to me to share. And I'm just really lucky to help develop new work like this. And um, thank you. Thank you and you and you. Without this uh, and, and this casting, uh, we couldn't be here. And thank you, Emma. Quite magical. I mean, that, that sound design that when we go to WNYC and grab, I was like, That was Esther, you. Esther, you yes, did that. Esther. Okay, Esther. Well, you're in the house. So where's Esther? Is she here tonight? Well, yay, the sound designer. And, and but Emma, you, you press go. You did do that. You programmed it. I thank you all for coming. I thank you all for were on the live feed and watching us tonight and um and we'll you know watch it on the youtube and and a couple times and and learn learn more from this this work it's a process that's how we get to success is process thank you everyone have a terrific night and blessings on each of you Woo!